Hello, everyone. Uh, I know it's hard to believe that we've got more stuff, but we've got a lot of good stuff coming for kind of that middle ground in between your data model and the content that exists in your instance. So we looked at the core of what Looker is, that data model for shaping all of your data. We looked at the content that you're ultimately delivering to your end users. But really, a lot of what we're doing in Looker is that in-between stage of generating insights from all the data that exists in your Looker. So I know for us, internally at Looker, we have maybe 1,000 tables in our data warehouse. And I know that I've talked to customers out there that have tens of thousands of tables in their data warehouse. And sometimes modeling that data is the right way to do it. Obviously, all of us in here believe in the power of the model. But when we think about a model over thousands and thousands of tables, often that's not really the appropriate way to get at that data. Maybe we have 50 or 60 explorers that are valuable and a really long tail of things that maybe no one is using for a given point in time, but might have intermittent relevance to your organization. And so what we have done recently is we've really improved the way that the SQL runner works in Looker. So we've, we've introduced search. So I can go search this schema for where date columns are. And I can even immediately explore this data if it's not modeled. So if I want to go look at ETL jobs, a lot of you guys might not know this, but I can actually just immediately go explore this data. And we're going to generate a quick model so that you can browse this data. Um, but again, sometimes we don't have the data we need at our fingertips. And that's why we're introducing visualization in the SQL runner. So I know that sometimes you just want to ask a question, get an answer, and visualize it. And we want to be there to provide the tools that you need to do those things quickly. Um, we obviously need to bridge the gap between exploring data and issuing raw SQL. But we want to be there for everything that you need to do in your organization. So really excited about visualization in the SQL Runner. Um, so the next piece, turning to the Explore page, yeah. Um, and this is coming in Looker 5. So, the next piece is, is really turning to the Explore page. We want to make that better for you, getting at all of your data. So the next thing that we're releasing as part of Looker 5 is over 50 new table calculations for reshaping your data. Um, so we've got stats functions in here. We've got ranking functions in here. We've got lookup functions in here. Um, we've got index match for the Excel people. We've even got pi. So uh, let's actually take a look. I built a dashboard of new content. and. Uh, as Abby mentioned, you'll notice there's no looks in this space. But this dashboard is full of good stuff. So you can see we've, we've got a linear regression here. But now that we've got slope and intercept functions, we can really easily look at the residuals of this data set. So we can see a couple outliers here. We've got ranking and percentile. We can look at the skew. We can look at the mode. We can do lookups of what those popular items are. We've got pi to, I think, 12 digits. Um, that's important. Um, Yep. And we've got all the statistical testing that you need to do when you're running those A-B tests. So binomial testing, paired t-testing, chi-squared, um, really everything that you want to do with the output of those Explore queries, we want to enable the Explore page to do that. And so kind of we saved the best for last here. Um, I, I looked it up earlier this week, and we're doing about 200 chats per week. So we're talking to you guys 50,000 times a year on chat. And that's not even including all the face-to-face -face visits and conversations that we're having with you. And we are listening when you guys tell us about things that you want. Um, we're kind of constantly, as a product team, working through the requests that you guys have and trying to understand what the problems that you guys are having. So um, I'm pleased to share that we are actually about to unveil your most popular feature ever in Looker. So, Again, we talked about the model and what the model is really good at. And that's shaping and understanding your data and preparing environments to explore it. And we know that we need to deliver content in Looker. And that's dashboards and time series and things that end users can do with that data. But sometimes there's this subtle middle ground where I've got a time series of event data, and I want to compare that to booking data. But there's no inherent relationship between these two data sets. Maybe you've done a really good job and gotten them all in the same database. Um, but maybe they're even in different databases. And they have no inherent data relationship. So lots of you guys have done some crazy stuff in the model to make it so that I can look at a time series of event data and booking data. Um, but no longer will you have to do that. Um, in Looker 5, we're announcing the ability to actually federate result sets in the front end of Looker. So I can take two queries from the same database, 
or two queries from completely different databases and actually join them together in the front end of Looker. So let's take a look at that. Yeah. So I've got a pretty typical event data set here. I'm looking at events over time. I'm looking at sessions. I've got a change in sessions. And I want to compare this to a transactional data set. So this is the magic right here. I'm actually going to merge this result set with an unrelated data set in the orders table of a MySQL database. So this is a completely different database that I'm going to, that I'm going to combine with that data set. So let's go to orders, and let's grab week, and let's grab account of orders. And we can even make a, a, a change. Oop. Change. I'll, I'll leave it caps. So now we're looking at the change in orders. And I'm going to go run this query, take a look at what it looks like. So we've got a time series, kind of pretty typical stuff here. Now, when I save this query, we're actually going to take these two result sets. We've already figured out the key between them. And we're actually merging these together in the front end of Looker. So table calcs are coming along. The values are coming along. And I've got this data set that I can now work with and present in a dashboard to my end users. I can go look at these changes next to each other on the same chart, if that one showed up. So in any case, we've got all their data here in one spot, and, and we can go work with that data now. I can take ratios across this data set, and, and it's really all in one place. Um, but the magic doesn't stop at things like time series. We can actually merge together things like states and strings. So I've got web traffic here. You'll note we have some users that don't have a state associated with them, and of course, no orders associated with that state. And we can even actually create table calculations and join together completely unrelated data. So I have an events count and a product brands count. There's no join key between these, so I created one in a table calculation called join me. And I actually join these two data sets together into kind of a magical single value. So the whole idea here is no longer do you have to overmodel your data. Your model can stay as small as it needs to be, and you can still do all the reporting you need in Looker to deliver end users great reporting. Um, yeah. So kind of hopefully through the thread of, of what we've shown you in Looker 5, you can see how we're really trying to strengthen the developer experience, deepen the analytics you can do with that data model, and then deliver great content to your end users. And we're building the pieces underneath it to deliver those full applications that you saw yesterday. So all of these components really fit together into just making your organization more successful with data. And that's why we're all here.